Hello everyone, uh, this is uh, my Red 9 Mauser C96 broom handle. Just wanted to kind of talk to you guys a little bit about, guys and girls, a little bit about um, the C96 broom handle Mauser and uh, some of the identifying features of them. So when you do see a 9mm broom handle that you're looking to purchase, you'll know what to look for and also just a, a really sketchy brief bit of history uh, from what I can remember without spouting off uh, printing out sheets of info. So the C96, um, the 96 stands for 1896 when the broom handle Mauser was either patented or brought to market. Um, I believe that's generally for when they are, they are uh, patented. Um, I could be wrong, so please feel to comment and uh, or correct me or learn me in the right way so I know uh, so we can get the right information to everyone but there is a good website out there um, uh, that has plenty of information on the guns I'll put a link in the description for that so you guys can read all about them and get the get the good info um, and instead of just taking my word for it you can go read about it yourself uh, but so the broom handle Mauser was the first commercially successful self-loading pistol in that the uh, it was designed so that the um, recoil forces would uh, move the bolt back and chamber a new round and get it ready to load, ready to go. Um, this is the first commercially successful um, pistol to do that uh, in uh, mass production. So that's why it is famous, other than how it looks and that they've made a whole bunch of them. Winston Churchill carried one. Um, it, uh, it's a pretty pretty famous firearm and uh, a great shooter too. Of course there's also the Star Wars connection whereas the Han Solo and Luke Skywalker blasters were made from C96 Mausers. Uh, real live fire ones and also replicas, uh, MGC replicas were used for the Star Wars films. Um, there are another um, a number of other films that use the guns. Um, so the Rocketeer, uh, there, so there's in different variations of the gun, of the broom handle Mauser. So um, it has its place in history. Uh, this one in particular is the Red 9 version. The Red 9 was a factory made 9mm uh, chambered version that was made for a special contract. Um, the Prussian contract, I believe, was 1916, I could be wrong. Again, I'll check those facts and put them in the uh, description. Um, but anyway, the Prussian contract um, wanted a 9mm uh, round to be fired through the broom handle Mausers, so that's why these were made. Uh, I want to say 150,000 to 200,000 were made. Um, again, I will check those facts and put that in the uh, description. Um, but it, there are a number of identifying features that you should really look out for when uh, learning about Red 9s. There have been a lot of 7.63 Mauser uh, broom handles um, rechambered into 9mm, but not all are Red 9s. There are plenty of fake Red 9 grips, there are plenty of uh, reproduction grips. Some people just put um, Red 9 grips on 1930 models and call them a Red 9 and sell them, try and sell them for the, to the unknown. Or unknowing and unsuspecting buyer for uh, much more than they should go for. So this is what to look for um, when looking for a Red 9 Mauser C96 broom handle. Okay, so the first very obvious one is the Red 9 in the grips. This was put there so that the soldiers in the field would not accidentally um, load and chamber 7.63 Mauser ammo in them. So it was uh, factory cut most of the time and painted red so it would be you know right in your face and you wouldn't make any mistakes on the battlefield uh, there were a number of them that were that came with regular grips and had they the nine was put in uh, in the field so there are some variations of correct matching numbers red nine grips so not all look the same but a lot of them that i've seen have looked just like this one um, with some slight variations uh, most of the time they have a fewer number of lines versus the pre-war and wartime commercial Mausers that had a few more li um, more lines to the uh, uh, to the grip. So this is a pretty distinctive look overall. 
the another, a couple other identifying features that are harder to tell, but one thing that every Red 9 should have, a genuine Red 9, should have a new type safety. So the new type safety is identified by, let me show you right there, the NS in the hammer. Also, your safety lever should be a uh, fire blue solid, no, so there shouldn't be a hole through it, and half knurled. So the knurling is on one half of it and the other side has uh, a smooth edge. Another identifying feature of the Red 9 is a 500 meter sight ramp. So it's graduated to 500 meters rather than the more optimistic thousand that some of the 7.63s have. Um, also, uh, whoops, sorry for bumping that guys. Uh, another identifying feature is the sight ramp itself. You'll see here, top of the frame, um, it has a nice smooth slope. The 7.63s, there's a number of variations, so there are plenty of variations to how uh, during the years of production and how um, they were made. But most of the time, the 7.63s have a double scout. They have a small lump and then a larger lump um, for the sight ramp. Um, the 9s all have, the original factory 9s all have a smooth uh, single ramp, just like this. Another identifying factor, let me just uh, show you that the weapon is clear as well. Okay, so is that they, not all, not all of them now, but most of them, had a scallop, a special relief cut in the cartridge follower, right there. You see that uh, that oval kind of scallop cut. Now, not all of them had that. Just like not all of them had the nine in the grips, but a lot of them do, and that's another special uh, identifying feature of the red nines. Another identifying feature of the red nines is, whoops. Um, a lot of them will have a Prussian Eagle stamp right here in the front of the magazine well. So if you see that, more than likely you're getting a genuine Red 9. However, not all of them had that. As you see, this one doesn't, or if it did, <laughs> this one doesn't look refinished, but it has some slight, that could have been a bit of an Eagle, but I don't think this has been refinished in any way. It looks pretty genuine, um, genuine shape to me. So... Uh, I'm pretty sure that this one just never had the uh, Prussian Eagle stamped on it, so um, that's that. This one in, is also uh, matching numbers except for the locking frame. The sear, the locking, uh, locking block, everything else, the grips, everything. Matching numbers except for the locking frame. No idea why, um, but the locking frame latch was a little worn when I got it, so I did replace that as well. I still kept the original, but... Uh, I did replace that so everything stayed nice and solid. Um, the bore on mine is crisp, bright, shiny, perfect. Um, it wasn't fired a lot, apparently, uh, and uh, it's in great shape. It fires nice and sh true and straight. The other identifying marker on this one, this one's a little more, is that it is a 1920 rework, as you'll see. Right there, that 1920 with a circle S. Now, according to the website, I think it's 1896mauser.net. Uh, I'll again, I'll have that link in the in the description. Uh, List that a number of 1920 reworks. Some of them had the entire sight area milled flat, and a fixed sight put on in the back, and uh, shortened barrel. Uh, some of the red nines had shortened barrels. Um, so the 1920 reworks after the war. Uh, there were a number of things done to the different broom handle Mausers. Um, but the website does state that the ones that he's seen or that have been cataloged with the 1920 stamp where mine is with a circle S, those have all been untouched except for that stamp. So, and this seems to be the case with this one, there have been no alterations unless at that point that is when the locking frame was, um, was replaced. Uh, so other than that, there are no, there's no, there's been no work to it whatsoever to alter it in any way. Um, it is still in the original shape that it was as issued as a, as a nine millimeter Mauser for the, for the, uh, Prussian contract. So 
that's some of the things that you can look for when looking for a real red nine other than it being nine millimeter you have your grips make sure that they match the rest of the gun you have your new type safety you have your special 500 meter sight ramp you have your look for the slope to be correct and you have your um, scallop cut on the cartridge follower and possibly not always um, a Prussian Eagle stamp on the front of the magazine housing. Uh, those are going to be your identifying markers um, for when you're looking for a Red 9 Mauser. And if you need to know if it's original or genuine, look for those things first. Um, then check your serial numbers. There was a certain serial number range just for the Red, the Prussian contract guns. Um, so check those out too. Um, again, all that information is on the website that I'll put in the description. So there it is. There's my uh, Red 9 C96 broom handle Mauser. Um, it's a really cool gun. Really nice piece of history. Really uh, fun to shoot. Shoots super straight. It's very easy to shoot straight. Um, I know a lot of people say, is it accurate? Well, it's as accurate as you can shoot it, right? So in that case, it's pretty darn accurate. Um, you can shoot out the center of a bullseye. At a pretty good distance uh, with a stock on it. Uh, check your local, check your laws for that to see if you do get a red nine with a stock. Um, whether your gun is legal to have a stock on it, otherwise it's a short barrel rifle. Uh, but I can tell you, with a stock, these things shoot ridiculously straight, and uh, recoil is manageable, even with 7.63 Mauser ammo in a 7.63 Mauser gun. Uh, just the broom handle Mauser is such a cool. Uh, looking thing and uh, very fun to shoot so if you can get one uh, definitely do it uh, you won't be disappointed uh, they're uh, unique they're kind of uh, they're they're holding a value pretty well and um, don't be afraid to shoot it though it's kind of a shame to get something like that and just sit it away and let it soak in oil all the time uh, it's kind of like having a really cool car that you don't drive it's kind of pointless uh, anyway so um, oh, one thing you'll notice on mine, I did change out the bolt stop. This one is a brand new, newly made bolt stop from KB International. Um, I do still have the original matching numbers bolt stop, but since I'm shooting it, uh, I want to go ahead and be safe and not damage the original and just in case. And I, that's why I'm using a brand new bolt stop. Uh, also, I've replaced the springs in it. So anyway... I recommend doing those things if you're going to fire your Red 9 Mauser. Get you a new bolt stop from KB International. Get you some new springs. Um, have it checked over by a gunsmith and look for, look for damage. Um, don't shoot it with a cracked uh, or worn bolt stop. And check out that locking block too. Make sure everything's good to go. The bolt should be in good shape. Uh, keep Just maintain it keep it clean and you should be good to go. There's no reason why you can't enjoy it. Uh, I wouldn't put thousands and thousands around through it like a modern day gun, but you can definitely shoot it to your heart's content and have fun with it. Uh, why not? So anyway, uh, coming up is the, uh, range video showing you how it shoots. That's going to be relatively short, uh, compared to the information portion of this. But anyway, just wanted to show you guys this. Let me show it up close a couple glamour shots real quick, um, before I, before I cut.
right, guys, there she is. Enjoy.